two girls woodpile. Tall farmer daughters, sturdy in tight jeans and denim jackets that they'll shed as bending, picking up and stacking, bending down again, they build the pile. I'm with them, keeping up, but pausing to take breaks, pacing myself for the 60 years between us. The girls forge on, bend, lift, stack, turn and bend again. They put their grams wood in the day before. Their grandma, my age probably, did not join stacking up the wood. Instead, I fantasize she made them cookies, cakes, or maybe pies. A Norman Rockwell grandma with white hair pulled back in bun, stout, flower-dusted apron, all forgiving smile. I don't bake cookies, cakes, or pies, but I do work, and I can give them money, these bra girls, although it's little that they ask, and so I give them more. It's towards a car, I grin, writing the check. The taller sister takes it, although she is still too young to drive. She's younger, but the leader goes to tech school, raises bulls. She wants to farm and work with oxen in the woods, just like her dad and uncle and their father, too. Her sister's older by a bit, but smaller and holds back. She's fond of chemistry and wants to go to college, be a teacher like their mom. It's all so wholesome. I'm in awe of it. These lives in pattern, just like those quilts up on their grandma's bed. And we just keep on working, bend and lift and stack and build the pile. My sister, at her woodshed, down in the valley town, bemoans her lack of help. It's fertile river farmland there, once tended by large family clans of refugees from distant wars, whose long syllabic names are fading on the roadside stands. The kids don't want to work, my sister says. What's wrong with them? They're in the malls, paved over farmland that their fathers used to plant, kids with bright screen devices blooming in their hands. The hilltowns seem a world away from this, although they're not. Yet see these sturdy girls who josh and tease each other as they work. It pleases me that they are eased enough to chatter on as though I were not there. They started quiet, testing the tenor of the job and me, but good work loosens tongues, and as I work along, doing my share, their banter brightens. What he said to a friend, and how she called up after, what she said, he said, or did, and what they wore. I listen mostly to the flow, the girl wind blowing, but no, as these girls do not, how he will break her heart, how she'll recover, but will not forget him, that one. As I remember Johnny W., back when I was just 15, the scent of beer upon his breath, the mystery place where his tanned neck encountered that blue Oxford shirt. The taste of this first lust upon my body's mind. And I am pregnant with it now, forever. As some man or woman, maybe, will inhabit these strong girls, and they'll remember, each of them, just how it was. The salt of someone else's skin the smell of it, the steamy radiance of touch, as they will not remember 60 years from now. A woodpile day with that old woman who kept up with them, worked hard, bent, lifted, stacked, and built the pile, and watched and saw and wrote it down.